So now I'm at Yahoo Finance website, so we can search for symbols or companies. So let's say if I type uh, Netflix, okay, and then click on that. So we'll be directed to their page with their details. I can, let's say, click on historical data, and we can see their historical prices. And let's say if uh, I'll be using daily frequency, and let's say I'll take the data for the last five years, okay, and I'll click apply and after a while you can click download data then we can proceed to import the data into excel now in excel uh, you will click on the data tab and select uh, from text or csv file so the file that you downloaded will be in a text form so click on the file and you'll be shown a window where you will see a preview of the data so make sure that uh, everything is divided correctly okay you can check the sanity of the data uh, in this case the delimiter is comma so if everything is okay i'll just click on load and now the data is loaded in now we'll proceed to calculate the daily return for this series of data and just to confirm this is from 20th of april 2015 to 17th of april 2020 so we have a series of uh, 1,259 data points, okay, for daily prices. So I'm going to compute the returns now, okay, so I'll just create a column here, returns, okay. Uh, then I'll use the adjusted closing price on in column, column F. So I'll take the natural log loan of F3 divided by F2. So we'll take the ratio of the price on that day divided by the previous day's price okay so this is based on the continuous compounding method so of course some people would prefer to use uh, discrete compounding where they just take the change in the price divided by the previous day's price okay but i'll use uh, continuous compounding in this case so this is the uh, this is the return over that one day okay about a drop of 1.232 percent so i'll just copy okay and then i'll just move to the last row and then uh, I'll just highlight all the way up here and then just press uh, paste, okay, control V. So the formula will be pasted all the way up to the top. So next uh, we will rank the returns. So we'll sort this in ascending order from the lowest return to the highest return. So I'll just create a column here for rank return. Okay, and I'll just use the sort function. Okay, if you are using the Microsoft or Office 365. So this is the array. I'll just highlight I3 to I1260. And the sort index here is for first column. So I'll just type 1. And the sort order will be ascending. So that's 1. Okay. And by column, you can just type false. Okay. So it's sort by row. So you can type false there and then close bracket. Okay. So we have all the data. Okay. That are all the return data sorted in ascending order. So the you can see that the largest loss here is actually 14.07%. Now, of course, if you want to make sure that the rank is correct, okay, let's say I'll create a rank column here and I'll use the rank function. Uh, I'll use rank average, okay, so I'll select the first number L3, okay, so then uh, I'll then my reference will be the whole column from L3 to L1260, okay, and then the order will be in ascending form. I'll put type 1 there, okay, and just type there, okay, uh, so make sure you lock in this cell. Okay, for the whole array, and then I'll just copy it downwards, and you'll see that uh, the numbers, okay, are ranked in ascending order from first until the last point is one two five eight. Okay, uh, so we have one thousand two hundred and fifty eight uh, daily returns here. So we can now proceed to calculate uh, or to find the var and the conditional var. All right. So over on this side, I have the probability level, which let's say I will use five percent for now. Uh, I'll do a simple count. Okay simple count here so the count uh, for this particular series of data I'll select column L is 1258 so it will only count the numerical data so it will exclude strings and empty cells so we have 1258 so what I want to know now is the location of the 5% var so the location okay the location will be of 5% times the number of observations so it's around 62.9 of course, I'll round it to the nearest whole number. So in the formula, I'll just type round, okay, and to zero digits, okay. So that's 63. So in other words, I just have to calculate uh, the 63th term from this uh, series of data. So of course, if I eyeball it, I can find 63 here, okay. So it's negative 0 0.0396.
But of course, if you want Excel to pick it up, okay, so the var for location P, in this case, uh, you can use a simple VLOOKUP. Okay, I can use a simple VLOOKUP here to look for location 63. Okay, for these two uh, columns, okay, this array for second column, and uh, this will be uh, approximate, okay, also uh, uh, false, which is exact match. So I should get this, the same answer. Okay, of course, if you have Office 365, you can use XLOOKUP, okay, uh, for position six, uh, rank 63. And this is the lookup array, uh, column K, and the return array is L. Uh, if, it, if not found, you can put an error message. Uh, the match mode should be exact, zero. And then uh, I'll just put one for search first to last. Okay, you also get the same series of data. Uh, you can also use a small function. Okay, this will return the kf smallest value in the data set. So I can select uh, array L here, and K would be the position 63. Okay, you will also get the same uh, uh, the same result. Okay, so there are a lot of ways how you can extract the number up. Okay, so that's done for the va the value at risk var, and then for the conditional var. So for conditional var, this will tell us the average loss. Okay, if the var is exceeded. So what we can observe first before we do the formula is that the var here is at position sixty three. Okay, so this is the 5% worst loss. So that means from 62 all the way up to the first, this is the losses after the VAR is exceeded. In other words, uh, the average loss here would be about 6, if you look at the bottom here, it's about 6.122%. So that's how much the uh, the stock okay will stand to lose if the VAR is exceeded. So how do we capture this into this uh, this calculation? Okay, so I could, for example, let's say uh, I'll just build it slowly. So I can use a formula called filter in uh, Excel for or the Office 365 version. So in filter, I can select the array, okay, which is uh, L3 to the bottom. Then uh, what do we include? Okay, what do we uh, filter in this case? So in other words, I only need to take values from 1 to 62, which is less than 63. So in other words, what I need to do is I need to type L3 uh, with the hash and the filter here is for the return to be less okay, than the var number that I have here. So any values that is larger than this negative number okay, or that is, uh, that is more negative than this number, I will include it in. But if, it's, uh, if I can't find anything, of course, I'll show uh, NA. Okay, but I should have the result there. Now, of course, it's not the result that I want because uh, the filter function is just to give us the return the array that is that meets the condition. Okay, but uh, what we want to do now is to average out this series of data. So I just need to type the another part of the formula, which is to average out the formula. Okay, average out. Okay, and then uh, you can get your answer. Okay, which is 6.1, uh, 0.06122, or uh, it's a... Uh, loss of 6.122% on the average. Okay, so of course, if you want to reconcile it, I could just take the average myself. Okay, you could sum up. Okay, you could do a sum if. I could do a sum if here uh, for the range. Okay, so if this part here for this return, if the, the criteria will be that the return be less than, okay, so I will join it up with the var. So in this case, anything that is less than negative 0.03965 will be included. And the sum range will also be column L. Okay, so this will give me the total, but it's not the average yet. So I will need to manually average it out. Okay, so if I just uh, type uh, enter here, I'll just get the total. Okay, but what I need to do now is I need to divide okay by the number of observation, which is uh, 63 minus 1. Okay, that's 62 observations. So I can see it ties up to this again. Okay, so there are a lot of ways how you can extract from the series of data here. Okay, so we finally have our, our numbers. So at a 5% uh, probability level for within a daily period, there is a 5% chance that the stock could lose more than 3.965%. I'll convert this to a percentage. Okay, and if the VAR is exceeded, then uh, there will be an average loss of 6.122%. But if I change P to 1%, okay, that will be, uh, the, there'll be, there's a 1% probability that within a day, the stock could lose more than 7.89%. And if the VAR is exceeded, then the stock will lose, uh, on the average 10.16%.
Okay, so different values of the probability will yield a different var and conditional var. Now, of course, if you want to find out what date uh, this var is on, you can use the xlookup function. Okay, so if I do, let's say, xlookup, and then I'll click on the lookup value here. Okay, and let's say I want to, and the array will be within column i, okay, where we have the returns computed earlier. And then the return array will be the date, okay, which is in column a. And if not found, of course, we can type an error message. Uh, it, the match mode should be exact, zero. And search mode, I'll type one. So this is, of course, uh, you have to convert this to a short date. And you can find that this happened on 21st August, 2015. Okay, so just to confirm, you can find this on 21st of August, okay, 2015. Okay, this is the, uh, in this case, it's a 1% uh, worse loss, okay, for the, that period. And if you change it back to 5%, then the date will change again, okay, based on the observation. Okay, so that's for historical VAR.